Welcome to the first real video for the Scientific Programming in Python Lecture 2020. In this video, I'm going to talk about organizational matters, meaning um, uh, what to do to get um, your credits for this class, as well as the date and time of this class. OK, so first of all, about us. Um, I hope you see this video as in the third video in a series. Um, we already had short introductory videos about us. So I'm not going to go through this. I just have our emails written here again. Um, and I want to ask you to write us an email or in the forum if you have any questions and suggestions for content. You can also provide. You can do so via GitHub issue. You can ask us personal emails if you have personal questions. And there are other means of communication, which I'm going to explain in a later video. Just hear our emails again. Don't hesitate to ask us. OK. So first of all, date and time. During Corona, um, we will upload lecture videos on Tuesday. I'm not sure if they're always going to be on time, um, because rendering takes some time. And I'm also uploading this during, I'm also recording this during the actual lecture slot, so it may be a bit later this week. OK, so we will split the lecture videos into multiple parts, which are then available in the courseware tab of, your, of the Sudapi page of this lecture. Um, from next week on, the videos will include small exercises to test your attention and to keep your attention up. Um, this video, as you see, is a presentation. However, from next week on, it's going to be um, us presenting a Jupyter Lab. Um, I'm going to show you what that is later in a later video. Um, we will pro you will probably not see our faces during the coronavirus pandemic, um, but we will instead just do it in a podcast style. If you don't like it, we can all we could also think about doing it in a different way. Don't hesitate to ask us. The videos we're uploading on Tuesday should sum up to ninety minutes in length. Um, they may not always do that because during the pandemic we don't have a real practice, so we may. Um, uh, take one, take like 10 or 20 minutes from the practice um, for these videos too. And on Thursday, in the extra slot from 2 to 4, um, we will try to uh, do live meetings on Sodapi, which are for your questions. And in these videos, we will basically answer any questions you ask live at that time or via mail, the forum, or the other means of communication we're going to tell you. And we really, really want you to ask questions. So this lecture is for you. So if you don't understand anything, ask. If you don't, well, you're wasting your time here. If you want to learn something, this is why you're doing the class. So please ask questions and don't hesitate to do so. OK, so like I said, um, the videos are going to be made available on Courseware, which you see is this tab here. And the videos are also going to be seen on Opencast. However, you cannot make videos invisible on Opencast. So the order of videos on Opencast is going to be somewhat arbitrary. And on Courseware, we want to have a nice structured content of the lecture. So please um, refer to Courseware for the videos. OK. And this is how it looks so far. So here on the left, um, you see, so the first week is the introduction week. And then uh, we split up the videos into multiple parts. Um, first of all, organization methods as this, this video and us introducing ourselves and so on and so on. So multiple small videos. OK. Regarding date and time, um, one other thing. I said uh, we're going to have live StartUp meetings um, Thursday from 2 to six, from two to 4. However, next Thursday, so this week, um, we will only have this live meeting from 2 to 3. And afterwards, from 3 to 6, Philip and me will be available for private conversations in Skype for individual in installation problems. So, this week is only about you getting Python to run and um, working with the course infrastructure to upload your first homework. The first homework will actually only be a simple hello world. But we want you to get used to our course infrastructure and how everything works. And also, you may need to set up Python. 
This works easily uh, most of the times. However, there are always a few exceptions where, it actually, where it's actually really hard to install. And don't hesitate to ask us. We have a lot of experience in getting these things to run. And just um, call us on Skype from 3 to 6. We will be there for you if we're not in another call. And we can we are probably able to help you. If you don't get Python to run at all, don't worry. Uh, we also have other uh, ways to um, to work with your homework, which I will explain in a later video. Okay. And then after the coronavirus pandemic and the lockdown, so it's not likely, but if there will be regular sessions, we will have one session every Tuesday from 12 to 2 and one session every Thursday from 2 to 4. These lectures will also, these sessions will also not be mandatory and they will still be filmed. So it's going to be us in the lecture room um, doing the same thing as we're doing as a video right now. We're not sure if this is going to occur, but um, we're also prepared to do the whole thing online. It won't be a problem. Okay, and if there are normal lectures, then the lectures will be a mix of concepts, coding tutorials, and interactive exercises. So you will hear from us, and once in a while, you will stop and work on some tasks we have to. Okay, regarding your credits. So first of all, this class counts for the new Methods of Cognitive Science module if you're, stud if you're studying under the new examination regulations. If you're studying under the old examination regulations, um, then this only counts into your profil bildner Wahlbereich, so your free credits. So for the new examination regulations, you get these four credits for the Message of Cognitive Science module. Um, just as a heads up, um, for this module, the statistics class, either um, held by Franke last semester and from now on every winter semester, or the one by Stauffenbiel will be um, your necessary um, for necessary credits for the Methods of Cognitive Science module. And then you need 12 additional credits to fulfill this module if you want to do this. Eight of which only will have to need a grade. So that means you can take three four credit seminars like this one, and one of these three doesn't have to have a grade. If you're studying under the, studying under the, new, under the old examination regulations, um, you can only get the credits for the Profilbildner Wahlbereich, your 33 credits where you can put any other class to. Okay, and this course, we will um, give you the opportunity to get a grade or only to get a pass. So if you complete enough homework, I'm going to show in the next slide how many there is, you get a pass. And if you additionally write the exam, you can also get a grade. Like I said, getting a grade is useful for those of you who study under the new examination regulations or for those of you who want to switch to the new examination regulations. The exam itself will be on the computer. I hope it will be us being in the same room such that we can help you if you have any problems and it will be coding tasks. So um, you will get tasks to solve. It's an open book exam. That means you can use, that means you can any source you want. I mean, if you're not, if you're doing this at home at your own laptop without us seeing you, we couldn't stop you anyway. But even if it's not, we want you to use any source you want because nobody ever programs without having 20 stack overflow tabs open. So we know that and we want you to use other sources. Um, however, you will notice that time is a constraint. So if you spend most of your time being on stack overflow and, uh, Googling how to print stuff, you will you won't be able to fulfill as many tasks as you would be otherwise. Um, in contrast to the homework, the exam will not be automatically graded, but we will look at it and we can give you partial points and stuff. Okay, if you have questions regarding the new examination regulations, don't ask us, please, but was but rather ask the mentoring team, uh, especially if you want to switch if you if you're thinking about switching to the new examination regulations. Okay. Um, last thing for this video, homework. You will get weekly coding homework, which you're supposed to do individually. This homework is corrected automatically and you get the tests too. So that means um, to make it easier for us such that we don't have to correct like 150 homeworks, um, 
we will automatically test these homeworks. So we're expecting the answers of the homework to be in a very special format such that it um, for the, that the tests we make for the homework work and you get the test too. So if you see that at home your tests are all passing, then you get full credit for this homework per sheet. So you get one sheet per week and um, there will be one to five tasks per sheet. So the first task will only be a simple hello world. Um, so that will only be one task, but in general, there will be one to five tasks and each sheet, each sheet gives maximum 25 points. Note, however, that how many points a task gives um, only reflects how hard we think this task is. So a really, really simple task, which requires one line of code, will give one point, and a more complex one will give five or 10 points. Um, there will be no partial points per task. You can either pass a task or you fail a task. So that means if you have, I don't know, two tasks worth, worth 10 points um, in a sheet, you will get zero, 10, or 20 points. And we can't do anything about it because, we, like I said, we are correcting the homework automatically. Uh, so we're not actually looking at your homework. So uh, there will be no exceptions to this rule. OK, there will be 12 to 13 sheets in the entire semester. That means they are up to 12 times 20, 25 points, 300 points maximally. You have to reach two thirds of that, meaning 200 points to get the shine. So as soon as you reach these 200 points, we have a dashboard where you see how many points you already passed and you already got. Um, as soon as you reach this, you can stop doing your homework. Um, of course, you can also continue because you want to learn something and you already get the shine. OK, now I said maximally 25 points per sheet. So some sheets will give less points. For example, the first one will only give 10 points to um, for the Hello World task, because it's not a really hard task. You just need to install Python. Um, that means that there the sum of points from the regular homework may be less than 300. Because that will be the case, there will be bonus exercises to make sure there are 300 points to reach. So if, for example, two sheets don't give 25 points, but only 10 points, there are 40 points missing. So we will give bonus exercises worth at least these 40 points to make it possible for you to reach those 300 points. So 200 points. So you won't need to reach less than 200 points but we will make it easier for you because we will give you a broader spectrum of which tasks you can solve. This is, um, it should be noted, the first time that you are able to get points for individual tasks instead of just passing or failing a whole sheet. So be with us if there are any problems or if you think it's unfair how many points um, an exercise gives and we may be flexible on that. More info on how to work on the homework will however be in a later video. And this is already the last video, um, the last slide of this video. I hope and I explained everything um, necessary for this. If you have any questions regarding the um, organization matters and credits, how to get your credits, ask us. We're there for you. Um, like I already wrote in the announcement, don't ask Professor Kuhnberger. Professor Kuhnberger has basically nothing to do with this class. It's only his name because there needs to be an official prof of this university um, holding the leg. Holding the lecture are me and Philip. All right, that's it for now.